carp fishing is probably the most popular fish I would guess now in the British Isles and a whole industry a whole tackle industry and bait industry has, has, has been drawn up into this carp fishing almost a cult basis you need great big rods two and a half pound test curve they've got to cast to Hawaii and beyond uh, braid line giant fixed ball reels uh, everything is just to, to me for that one big fish Whereas the youngsters coming into the sport today, they're missing out on a lot of this. You know, they could have some good sport with carp up to about 10, 15, 20 pounds. Uh, there's so many day to get fisheries around nowadays. Why not start small, have an appreciation for the size of the fish you're catching, rather than just jump in, get all the kit, sit there, get disillusioned with it, and probably leave the sport. I'll keep him low to the walls, and if he, if he flaps, we'll, we'll have him on the gravel. But perfect scales, beautiful condition. So rather than big heavy duty long distance stuff, we're going to be fishing close range. Here's the tackle and probably everybody's got something similar. This is just an Avon quiver tip rod, it's got ordinary Avon tip and a quiver tip. 11 foot, carbon fibre, uh, I'll read you the test curve, no it's not 2 or 3 pounds, it's a pound and a quarter. And it's taken some really big fish for me. So just Joe Average rod and reel really, uh, the reel Shimano, um, that's an aero sort of matchman's reel, regular freshwater reel is just what you'd use for everything it's Joe average type thing uh, line you can use I use five six pound line that's all you need any 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 decent make really is pretty good uh, and then all you need is the end rig and this is so simple you won't believe it you should use a waggler but just to show you how easy it is I'm just using you know what I call a bodied Avon float because I do a lot of barbel fishing and I find these floats you know don't just catch barbel they could catch a lot of other fish Normally you band them at the top up here and the floats are fixed, you know, sort of like that, top and bottom. This time, just bottom end it here, just lock in shot either side, dead simple, come along, plumb the depth, in this case it's what, two, two foot six, three feet, and the hooks I'm using here are these b 911 eyed barbless wide gape, I'd say a size 10 or a size 8 is all you want for fish up to about 20 pounds. I'm not using any boilies whatsoever, this is what I'm going to be using. And it's so cheap, it's for the budget conscious. Sweet corn. I think I paid about £1.50 for a great big sack, but get them from a freezer centre. Hot dog segments. Now, it's not like lunch and meat. If you smell these, they smell totally different. And obviously, not many people are using these. And I can assure you, they're excellent for barbel, and the carp love them as well. Um, a tin of these, staggering sum. Uh, current price is about 45p from a supermarket. That's less than a pound's within there. Secret additive here for about £7.50 for half a hundred weight. It's just dry bran. Now that bulks out my ground bait and it's very fine so it almost feeds off any other smaller fish. And I put with that just standard bread. Now we can't get any more simple than this, can we? Take your slices of bread. That's all you do. Dump them in here and mush them. It's just really like gunky, squishy, gooey mess. It's not quite as... Uh, as tailored as you see from the cookery programs on television. And then you add the bran to it as well. In it goes, all together. Now look, you can see immediately, this bran soaks everything up. I mix into that some sweet corn. No particular three tablespoons or anything like that. Just pile a load of sweet corn in there. Stir all that together. It gives you a bit of color as well, you know. Uh, not just for carp, because a lot of other fish do feed on corn. Oh, I'd have to say that sweet corn's not my uh, my favourite bait for carp and then I scatter this in the hot dog segments loose but you should see how narrow how slim they are so we'll be using three baits bread sweet corn and these super duper hot dogs the long distance guys will be casting way out past that island but what's the point because we are fishing so close you won't believe we're going to be fishing right down by this bush and the edge of the rushes so uh, what i like to do the first time on a session get a good bit of bait in the water now i know they say feed on the little and often but you know as i say this place was match fish for the last couple of days so they're, they're, they know what a bait is most of these commercial carp fisheries get plenty of bait in in there and the carp are well aware you know when the dinner bell's ringing so i'm going to be bailing in this bait um, in about a two foot circle i want to keep it quite tight and don't forget I can be that accurate. A, I'm using the float, and B, I'm only a rod length out, so I can fish literally like a pole fisherman does right under my rod top. Okay, you've got your piece of bread. Take out a good double pinch size of it, fold it over, and then you bury the hook on the shank. Leave the point there. Just leave the point, see the point? And at the top end of the shank where the eye is, 
I just roll it around and give it a little pinch on the end there, just on the end. But you can see I've got that hook point protruding. Now for the deadly hot dog segment. Most average way of hooking this would be push the hook straight through the middle, twist it, turn it, as per luncheon meat, pull it out. That's fine, except you can see here, look, you can see all the hook shank. That's no good, you don't want to see that. Push it through the outside skin, just slide it. Now if you look there, I defy anybody to see the hook there. It is absolutely, totally buried. Ordinarily it would fly off on the cast, but we're fishing so close to the bank, it doesn't matter. And to be honest, there's no fish in the world that's going to refuse that. It doesn't even look like it's attached to anything. Oh, there's actually two swims here. This is where the benefit of, of two anglers can uh, benefit from that one mix of bait. Obviously I've baited up here by this bush. I'm dumping Phil over there. We're both going to start with uh, bread flakes, see what we get on the float. And we'll bounce between each other from there. One use sweet corn, one use uh, the hot dog segments. And we'll just see what we're going to pick up and what carp are taking what baits. So we're in deep trouble now. Phil's in the right hand swim. He's got a real nice carp. <laughs> That's a good one hooked up. I can hardly fight mine because I've got one on the left hand swim. So we're going to have to put the camera down in a minute and, and take one or the other. Phil's going to net his. Get in, get in. Let's get yours quick. I'll give Phil the camera. Double whammy. Two at a time carp fishing. Now, why would you want to sit for weeks and not get some action like this? It's unbelievable. And this is not private. It's just a day ticket water. And there's loads of these all over Britain. It's the technique that's different. So you're, you're going back to basics, really. You're, you're getting away from all the high-tech stuff. you just got a hook, a float, bait up close in, little and often. That is really close to being thicker than feels. We're going to try and get the two in quickly together. And we're going to... Oh, I've got you, buddy. I've got you. Can't ask better than that. Two beautiful fish there. Yeah, I've got the I've got the edge on him, Jess. It's done the English weather on us. It's mucky. It's rainy. Bailiff's just come round to nab us for some tickets, and uh, told us it's absolutely tipping down up in London. So I think we're going to have to call it a day. But at least you've been able to see some of the fantastic fishing we've had. What 22 odd fish, averaging five six pounds. We have four over eight, 130 pounds of fish. I don't know. Little white lie, guys. I said we were packing up, <laughs> the drizzle stopped. I thought I'd have one last cast with a piece of that hot dog segment and I got a real nice fish coming in. Well, <laughs> what the hell are you doing, man? The rod's going in, for God's sake. I've got two fish. I've got one approaching double figures on Phil's rod, the cameraman, and I've got one on this side which might be double figures. Oh no! What's going to happen here? Put, put one down and put your foot on it. Put one down and put my foot on it? I mean, who is ever going to use normal carp tactics again <laughs> after this? Unless I put my foot on it and get... Let me net mine, Phil. Let me net mine. Get in there. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yes, please. That's a fat one. Oh, I love this. I love this fishing. 12 and a quarter. 12 and a quarter pounds with a fat belly. Not going to get any stills photographs. Oh, look at that. I've got to keep my knee on this other rod. Oh, what a beauty to finish with. What a cracker. And when I say finish, I'm obviously lying. I think we'll give it another five minutes. We'll get this other one in a second. I think we've got seconds left. He's still on, Phil, if you want this one. You want me to take him? Yeah, right. Well, have to be quick, though. Okay. You can't be quick with these carp. In comes, hopefully. That was one on uh, hot dog, and I think this one was on bread. And the bite indication was not the float, it was the rustling of the rushes. It was getting torn through the hedge. Oh, what a scrapper. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. You know what? I think it really is time to go home now. 